You just toughen up and do what you got to do. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 312. Today, we're joined by someone you may know from a little show called Into the Badlands, Mr. Sherman Augustus. My name's Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for this show. I'm the founder of Whistlekick, and we do all kinds of fun stuff. We have this show. We have a bunch of other websites like martialartscalendar.com, where you can submit and view martial arts events happening all over the U.S. Yes, international listeners, we will eventually expand internationally, but we've got to focus on the U.S. We've got to get stuff right before we move on. That's kind of the whole ethos of martial arts, isn't it? You make things better and then expand on them. And that's what we do. That's what we've done with our product lines. That's what we've done with our apparel. That's what we've done with everything in this show. And you can check out everything that we do at whistlekick.com. You can find the show notes for this episode, for all of the other episodes, at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're a longtime listener to the show, you know that I have been a fan of Into the Badlands from the very beginning. In fact, I spent most of the beginning of season two live tweeting the episodes, hoping that AMC would notice and say, hey, would you like to host a Talking Dead style show for Into the Badlands? Talking Badlands, I wanted to call it. Well, they didn't, but I was lucky enough to get to speak with Daniel Wu and Emily Beecham. And that was a lot of fun. Had them on the show, episodes 170, 171. We'll link from the show notes. But then here we are in season three, and we were approached again to bring on the most dynamic new character added to the show, a man named Mr. Sherman Augustus. We had a great time. Well, I, I probably shouldn't speak for him. I had a great time. He's an entertaining man, really funny, told some great stories, and really gave a lot of insight into the way martial arts has impacted his career as an actor and how his acting has impacted his martial arts. He gets kind of deep at times, and it was a wonderful conversation. I'm sure you're going to love it. So I'll step back now and let you listen. Hello, Mr. Augustus. Yeah. This hi, is this me. Is, hi, this is Jeremy with Martial Arts Radio. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. My neighbor's dog can stop barking. Oh, yeah, I can good. hear that. <laughs> and that's been a, a whole year of that. Really? And, oh, oh, yeah. And we're like... Uh, you know, called animal control and all those certain oh. things, you know, because she lets her dog, our neighbor lets her dog run around without a leash on. Oh, man. Is it a new home for you all or right. a new dog for them? Uh, that's their dog next door. I mean, they, uh, and it's so funny that she cuts both the dog's hair like they're a uh, lion. <laughs> <laughs> it it's takes ridiculous. all kinds. It really it's does. ridiculous. It's oh. so ridiculous. I mean, you know, but I'm trying to be zen. I'm trying to use all my training and not, you know, be nutty. This is really good. Oh, I get it. Awesome. And then our, our male lady, Alice, she stops over and she pets the dogs, which actually gets them going even more. So it just, uh, and now here comes FedEx. Oh, this is really good. Good interview. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's authentic. It's real. This is, this is it's, behind it's the real. scenes on your life. It's, you know, something that we can real. bring to people that nobody else will have. Exactly. Yeah. Welcome to my day. So I want to get back to Dublin right now. This is one of the reasons why I didn't want to come back to L.A. Uh, no, they're sweet people, but she just does not take care of her dog properly. Yeah. And everybody stops. So we have our, our FedEx guy. Uh, Gary's over there petting uh, the dog and Alice is still there. So we have FedEx and the United States Postal Service that's uh, adding to the uh, confusion over there. OK, anyway. <laughs> no, it's funny. It's all good. It's all good. You know, I, I've always wondered if, if you know, the, the different carriers look at each other with skepticism, you know, kind of a parallel to martial arts, you know, sometimes we're, it's like, you know, I'm a, I'm a karate guy and you're a kung fu guy, and you're, you're a taekwondo guy, guy, you know, you know? kind of eyeballing each other, you know, does the FedEx exactly. guy look at the UPS guy funny when they pass on the street? Exactly, exactly. Your kung fu's no good here. <laughs> funny. That's a good way to look at it. So how are you? I'm good? doing great. Doing great, living the dream. Yeah, excellent, 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 yeah, excellent, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I was excited when so we had a little when Steve reached out. We had a little yeah. trouble. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. We had a little trouble uh, last time, huh? Yeah. We trying to get together. Some, you know. A couple of weeks ago? That was a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was early in the month. Yeah. You know, we were trying to do this. Yeah. But, but that's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Technology, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can't live my, with it. Can't live with it. It was my last career. I spent 15 years in uh, IT, uh, and oh, really? You know, I, there are there are moments when I'm you know knee deep trying to deal with something with one of our websites or you know Skype or whatever it is, and, and saying, "Yeah, I don't know how people that don't have this background don't throw the thing through the window." Because I, I get frustrated I know. with a I know. pretty deep foundation. I know, no, it's just, I don't know. I don't know, and it's just gonna, you know, and, and they always say that it makes it's gonna make life easier, and this and that, you know, the whole nine yards, and it just confuses everything because you have to go back and re-educate yourself on a lot of other things, and it's crazy. But you know what? It's here now, so it's okay. I'm just waiting for flying cars. You know, I'm excited for for flying cars coupled with you know Uber, coupled oh, with the self driving. Oh yeah, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't know if I'm going to you know, can, some car. But but can just you take me you, to uh, you, the market. You talked about going back to Dublin, you know, for you know the the next set of shoot, you know, next shooting that you guys do on the show. Yeah. But can you imagine yeah. a car rolls up at you know ten o'clock at night and you just kind of roll in and you pass out and you wake up and you're there? I know, I know, I know. You know, the only thing about that you don't have conversation with the drivers. You know what I mean? And that's that'll be a bad. Yeah, you know, because it's it's kind of cool to you know talk to your drivers and oh, absolutely. you get to know them and meet their families and everything. So that would be kind of crazy to go to work every day and it's just you know an automaton taking you to work. You know, like um, who was that? It was uh, uh, I can't think of the film now, but it was like like just like the like a really crazy looking uh, mannequin to the front. Uh, it was the uh, uh, the Matt Damon movie. Uh, when they were trying to get to the uh, the satellite, the, the orbiting satellite that they can cure cancer and all that kind of oh, stuff. Oh, right, right, right. And he had to report to his probation officer, which was just this thing that didn't talk. It would be something like that. <laughs> very, very badly painted, right? You know, with rosy cheeks. <laughs> it would be funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it's a weird world. And I have this theory that eventually we'll reach a point where our ability to progress technologically yeah. exceeds our ability to handle the progress psychologically. Exactly. Exactly. And then that's when the machines take over because, you know, we won't be the machines to say you can't handle, you can't do anything yourself. I have to take over for you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what That'd do you think that looks like? Are you a, you know, a matrix kind of guy or terminator? You know, what, what does the machine takeover look like in your mind? Uh, I mean, I, I think both of those, I mean, have been embedded into the zeitgeist of my mind. You know, you don't know. I mean, it goes back to, I guess, grade school when, you know, our teacher uh, first read I Am Robots back in the day. You know what I mean? You know, you're sitting there and we're all sitting on the floor with our legs crossed and the teacher's reading I Am Robot. Because that was a that was my very first um, children's story. I was like, oh, wow. So machines can actually take over and, you know, do whatever they want to do. It was that. It was uh, Demon Seed. Remember Demon Seed? That old film? I don't. I can't think. Well, uh, the woman installed, uh, she was pregnant, she, and she install, installed this, this thing in her house that would take care of everything for her, cook for her, this, this, that, you know, bring the shades down, the blinds, all that kind of stuff. And then one day, uh, it uh, malfunctioned, and it just took over. It just took over the house and just, you know, terrorized this poor woman. And it was the first time uh, I've seen, you know, I didn't understand it, but it was the first time I've seen a film that was, Based and surrounded on um, a claustrophobic feel, right? Like Alien, right? You know, because it had that claustrophobic feel. So, yeah, I was just like, oh, man, that would be jacked up to be trapped in your house. And, you know, you can't get out. Uh, so, yeah, it, 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 it could be a multitude of things. I just don't want anything driving for me. That's just me. I, you know, I got to have some kind of control. Totally. You know, I get it. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you go to the bathroom. You don't have to wipe yourself. <laughs> wipe well, they kind of have that now, right? You know, with the the, the I know, I know, the bidets and, and those fancy toilets in Japan. Exactly, it's like in Japan. Oh man, that's crazy. Now, do you, do you have Look one of those? Because I think the no, the consensus no, picture of every one. actor is that you have some kind of fancy toilet. No, no, I've seen one before, and I'm just like, I don't know how to. I mean, you know, it looks kind of medieval. I mean, you have the little thing that sticks out. 
kind of neat, you know what I mean? And and, and you can just sit there. Nah, that's okay. I'm good. I'm <laughs> good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. We went from martial arts to toilet. Hey, uh, we go okay. all over the place on this show. My, <laughs> one of my favorite sayings is the best stuff is on the edges. I'll, I'll bet you've probably not talked about toilets in an interview before. No, oh, that have not talked about toilets. This is hey, the first I'll one. I'll take it. I'll take it. First, <laughs> first all around. You know, but let's oh, let's, let's, let's let's pull it back a little bit. Let's pull it back a little okay. bit. Okay. Um, okay. You know, at some point prior to the listeners hearing this, they'll have heard an intro. They're going to know at least a little bit about who you are. Hopefully, right. they're watching the show. Because I've been telling them from before the show came out, as martial artists, uh-huh. we need to support this show. Because, hey, we've got martial arts on TV again, and right. we need to right. care. Right. Right. And we do, we do need to care. I mean, you know, regardless of the... Uh, the why I work, whatever the case may be. If you're a fan of the movies or not, I think everybody's a fan of the movie, but if you have a whole bunch of choices all the time, uh, which we do as, uh, of, you know, television consumers and all these things, uh, basically what happens is you get, I, I, I don't know, you can kind of, kind of get numb or this is what I'm looking for. Um, it's not like you don't care or no one cares about the situation or the show or anything like that. It's just that you can pull it up anytime. You know what I mean? And uh, but it's the authenticity and it's the work. It's the it's everything that comes in, that goes involved that, that that's connected to uh, that particular uh, project, that piece. And you know, I think that um, and we're way ahead of the game because we have the Master DDs, we have. Uh, you know, the Hong Kong crew, we have Andy Chang, we have Stephen Fong, we have, you know, Daniel Wu, we have people who have done these things almost all their lives. And, you know, this, this form of uh, entertainment, this form of media, and we have great, 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 great stunt performers. And, um, you know, to be part of that, you know, you always want to do that kind of thing. I mean, you know, I mean, we're both like, you know, walked out of comfort movies as kids and, you know, started, you know, just doing something. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm the Shaolin priest, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, now that you get a chance to do it and you see the hard work that goes involved and, you know, the things that you have to do, the condition you have to be in, um, you know, you have to be able to move. Uh, and when you start seeing that stuff and you have to partake in it, you appreciate it more. Uh, and especially when you're not, you know, if you're not doing it. I remember when my mom called me, and I, I say this quite often, I always have to go back and reiterate this, when she watched the pilot for Into the Badlands, and she called me, you know, I, I saw the trailers and everything, and I was like, wait a minute, Marshall watched the television show, and my people didn't know anything about it, and I was like, okay, folks are going to get fired, and actually, um, those folks did, that was <laughs> back, back for real? then. Seriously? Oh yeah, I, I I did find uh, the manager and uh, the agent that I had at that time, and uh, the year that the pilot was uh, released and uh, the first the first six episodes, um, and I was you know I was like whoa okay this is great this is a great concept, and um, you know they worked through their growing pain uh, as far as being a new show and what they were doing, but every, all the other components were there we were just talking about the. Uh, the the, uh, the master DD and you know everybody who was bring that brought you the kill bills and the matrixes and all those things and um, I just knew the show was going to be a success and, you know like every show um, this starts off and you have to grow and you have to get your audience you have to pick your audience you you know actually your audience has to pick you nowadays um, it's just like an animal an animal picks you you know a cat picks you a dog picks you you know uh, when you want a puppy or whatever, or a kitten. So, um, watching the show, uh, I knew that they were going to, you know, it's going to be a good show. And slowly but surely, year after year, you know, uh, the content got uh, stronger and stronger. Um, the actors, great, you know, and you have actors on the show that uh, have martial arts experience and some don't. And everybody that didn't worked hard at it. And you can tell by season two, um, they were picking up uh, more skill sets and, and moving more and, and able to do what they do in uh, Wushu. And uh, because that's, you know, basically what we're doing is, is that kind of movement. And, um, and I just, I just feel right now that uh, we are uh, giving our audience uh, because we do have loyal fans, our audience exactly 
what, you know, they love, you know, from, you know, all the way going back from being a child to, to, to adults. And uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, I am super happy and glad that I got a chance because it was at one point I was thinking, hmm, I'm never going to be able to, you know, use my martial arts skills um, in anything because there's nothing out there. And then here comes into the Badlands. Okay, cool. And now the next thing was, okay, I'm going to, there it is, it happened. Um, uh, and I appreciate everything that uh, our folks do for us. Uh, it's just fantastic folks. Um, everybody's a professional. And I think what really makes us work hard is, A, the conditions. Uh, that's one. But the crew, uh, and I'm talking about everybody, all the way down to caterers, everybody works hard. And you don't want to go to work any day and not disappoint your fellow coworkers. And that's what it's about. We're all freaking coworkers. You know, that's what it is. And I appreciate that. And uh, this is the first time in a long time. I've been doing this for uh, 32 years now. First time in a long time. I mean, there's been moments. But this is the first time in a long time that every component works and everybody gets to tell their story, you know, because we all collaborate. And um, uh, I think one important component of the whole thing is there's not one person uh, that works on the show. And I'm talking about office in the whole nine yards. There's no knuckleheads on, on the show. There's no people that you don't want to engage in a conversation. Uh, even if they work in the office or something like that. So it's, it's, it's a really cool treat. And I'm really enjoying um, working on the show. And it's, it's not work. I mean, you know, you go to work and you just you play a lot. And you, you're hanging out with your best friends. You're hanging out with your, your aunts and the uncles and your sisters and brothers. Mm. It's, it's great. Crazy. It's crazy. It's, it, it's such a fascinating show. You know, I, I, it is. like I said, I, I've, I've been a fan conceptually since before it even aired because I, I i saw what they were trying to do and i was so excited as a martial artist as an advocate for the right. martial arts that it was going right. to be there and right. you know there have been some weird things that have happened i mean i don't think anybody in the martial arts community would have said yeah nick frost let's let's get him on a martial arts show that but it works right it works so, and so nick, clearly nick and move <laughs> yeah I, i'm i've been surprised where is yeah. where is that that creativity I, I guess is the way to put it coming from somebody's got their thumb on the pulse not just of martial arts but of martial artists um you and know I'm, that's a good question for the producers and some of the writers um because i mean they had to you know conceptually come up with all this the whole thing you know daniel broke it down to me how this whole thing came uh to fruition uh, i think he said it was michael uh it was either michael Chamberg are in Stacey Shear. I'm not sure, but someone went, they went to a screening of, um, of, uh, what was this? Uh, shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, of RZA's, uh, Man with the Iron Fist. Or what, 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 oh, what was okay. the film that he did? Yeah. I think so that's they went to that. And, yeah. They went to that, that screening or that premiere and they walked out and they said, this is a shame nobody's doing this on television. Right? Yeah. Next thing you know, there's a phone call to Daniel Wu. And so they got together. And basically, you know, our show is loosely based off of uh, The Monkey King. And uh, that's how they built it. And so I was really blown away because, you know, the next chapter of my professional career is, you know, director, seat, producer. You know, so, you know, thanks to the show, we've been having a lot of me and my two best friends who we have our company. We've been able to get into a lot of rooms and uh, there's a lot of, uh, the things happening with that, but I don't want to digress too far. Uh, what Daniel was telling telling me one day after work when they were introducing my character, uh, when they did pitch, they had three pitch meetings in one day. And I don't know if you ever heard the story, so you need to let me know if you have. Um, and they had a picture book. They had a look for the show. They had everything that you're supposed to do when you walk into a room to pitch a show. And they had what he told me was AMC, HBO, and somebody else, or maybe Stars or Showtime or something. But it was three meetings in one day, right? And 
they went to AMC first. They went in, they pitched it, they walked outside, and they were just standing there, just chit chatting, you know, by their cars, putting money in the meter. And I, I think you were saying that in, in the phone rang. And uh, because they were getting ready to go to their next meeting, and AMC gave them an offer. And they had to call everybody and cancel their meeting. So, no, I didn't. You not hear tell that story. me, yeah, you tell me how, uh, you know, it's built that void. So now the next thing to do is, is keep it engaging and interesting for the audience. We're doing that, you know. But, uh, you know, the other component is the right night, you know, the, the night that you're on. So people are watching. And, you know, we're up against uh, every television show that's on cable or pay cable. Uh, like the USA's, uh, uh, the TNT's, or the, the AMC's. You know, they still have to run ads and commercials. And then, you know, we're bumping up against the Hulu, the Netflix, and the Amazons, which they don't do so. Plus, with those entities, you can just straight uh, binge, right? So, you know, with our show, we have to get by commercials. Any other show, you have to get by commercials. So it's important that we're delivering, you know, really, really good content to keep folks engaged. Because I can't stand commercials at all. And, um... So, uh, you know, my hat's off to the patients that our audience has because, you know, I get a lot of messages about, oh, it was like 9,022 plus eight commercials. And I had to sit there and watch that, but I watch it because the show's good. I get it all the time. I think we all do. I mean, especially after the uh, uh, episode 30, the, the, the new one, the, the, the first episode mm-hmm. of the season. You know, I think they show like, after the first break, after the fight scene between the widow and moon, I think there was like uh, seven, five commercials. That's a lot. Maybe more. I don't know. But it was just wall to wall commercials. And then I'm looking at Twitter because we're still in Dublin. Everybody's off about this. Like, oh, here's another commercial. Here's another commercial. You know, yeah, here's another commercial. So people hate that. Uh, <laughs> they do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry they do. And then they raise the level of the commercials, you, you notice that the volume goes higher, you know, because they know we check out, you know, so I don't think buying tires and refrigerators are, are that important to me when I'm watching my favorite show. I'm sorry. I just don't want to see it. I, I understand. How, how would you do it? How would you do it? Would you, would you prefer to see a show like this go, go to Netflix, you know, where, where we don't um, have to have commercials and you could binge it? Uh, I mean, the show gets binged regardless. Uh, I think, I think somebody has to have, have the wherewithal to just say bump, um, you know, what's normal and just keep it. I, I, I love AMC. So, you know, the longer we're on AMC and we're hanging there and, you know, folks are digging the show and they know where to find it. That's fine with me. You know, uh, that's on us to make sure our audience is engaged and, you know, and that's part of the whole thing going back. That's part of the whole thing about going to work every day, you know, because we have these loyal fans and, you know, I certainly, you know, my conversation to myself all the time was I certainly do not want to let our audience down because if I wasn't on the show. That would be a, that would be one of my favorite shows. And, you know, every Sunday night I would just binge, you know, do like everybody else is doing. I would get my Westworld in. I would get my, uh, uh, you know, a couple other shows on show on Showtime in. And I would definitely get into the Badlands in on Sunday night. All the time. Sunday night will be my night. It, it always has been. Going back to like the Sopranos and you know and, and so forth and so on. You know, with different shows. Sunday night seems to be a really good night to put a good show, a good content on. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's always been a, a pivotal place for that kind of hour long, quality, deeper storytelling. Yeah, yeah. drama. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Sure. So we've spent some good time here talking about Into the Badlands, talking about your role in Into the Badlands, and we're going to come back. We'll talk more about that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we've got you on to talk about martial arts. So I, I oh, yeah, want to know, yeah, I want to know your martial arts story. How did, how'd you get started? Uh, okay. I, early in my career, I did a couple of, uh, films that, uh, uh, you know, and especially being an ex-athlete that I had to do some martial arts stuff. And I, I was always told, and this is like back in, you know, my, Right after I finished playing ball, late 20s, you know, going into my early 30s. And in 1996, I did a film called Space Marine. 
And uh, there was this gentleman that, um, you know, we used to have these conversations all the time. He was our uh, stunt and fight coordinator. And he took on, it was just one guy, pretty modest budget, but it was just one gentleman that was doing all that. And uh, we had these conversations. And then I had a big fight scene in this, uh, in this film. And the day that we shot that fight scene, we shot it. We had one day of rehearsal. And two days later, we shot that fight scene, uh, Blake Boyd and I. And it was intense. It was brutal. And so when we shot, after we shot that, uh, in between, uh, we were doing our next setup. We were, we were moving on because that scene almost took all day. Um, that gentleman said, you know what? Listen to me. He was very serious. He said, you need to get into martial arts. You will be really good at it. And I did. You know, I, I came back to L.A. and I started training and, you know, got my life, my, got my, my, my first Dan and I got my second Dan. Um, and I studied with uh, two, uh, two masters, Master Jin and then uh, Master uh, Ken Park. Um, and he bought uh, Steven, Steven uh, Seagal's old uh, studio who actually it was actually right me on the rock. He was a uh, he's a DJ uh, older guy. It was called, it was a disco then. And I can't think of the name. It was a disco then in the 70s. Then Steven Seagal opened a, uh, a um, studio there. And then Master Park bought it and was there for years. Uh, and so that's where I started. You know, I got my third band. And I really didn't complete my test. So I'm still a second band. I didn't complete it, actually. I, it, was a, it was a breaking technique that I didn't do. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> one of these days I'll do that. But um, that particular gentleman that helped me out on uh, Space Marine was none other than guess who? I'm gonna let you try to guess. He's on the, the, the his son is on our show. Oh, He's on the, Into the Badlands. I, I'm I'm going to embarrass myself and, and say I'm 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 not sure. It was Danny Tan, Lucas Tan's dad. Oh. Boom. Yeah. It's funny how yep. how those dots connect, isn't it? It's funny. Right. So, you know, I work with the father and now I'm working with the son and it's just really bizarre, but it's cool. I, you know, it's really cool. It's so cool. It just shows you, you know, there's a, uh, you know, uh, I had an acting coach. who used to say there's only four living rooms in Hollywood. So you got to watch what you say. And it's probably only four, four dojang <laughs> in Hollywood. So you got to watch what you do. Oh, what a trip. Funny. So, yes, you know, sure. just, just listening to the names of, of the instructors, are we talking Taekwondo? Taekwondo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Park taught uh, Taekwondo and Kutsu. So, uh, and then our one step sparring and all that was Hapkido. So you, you've had a diverse martial arts upbringing, I guess we can say. You're, yeah. you're not, yeah. you know, you, you weren't just having stuff crammed down your throat, you know, in, in the stunt team two weeks ahead of shooting. You've, you've got some, no. you've got some legit no. martial arts background. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 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 You know, and it's unfortunate. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, I want to stick to, you know, there's certain movements that are similar, you know? Um, and then, you know, like I said, it's, you know, uh, we're doing, uh, you know, Wushu style. Uh, which is a little different. The movement's a little different, you know, because I'm tall and, and, and lanky. Uh, so the movements are different a little bit. But, uh, you know, you, you have to uh, empty your vessel and you have to learn. And so, you know, when we're learning these things, um, you know, it's kind of cool because, you know, I, I know different stuff now, you know, over here and over there. Um, and I dig it. It's, uh, it. It can be, as you know, it can be a little mind-consuming uh, to learn different movements on the fly. We do not get a chance to rehearse a day before, two days before we have a week of rehearsals. We don't do that. You know, what you read in the script, you're not going to do the movements that you read. You're not going to do, you're going to show up. Master DD is going to master DD or Andy Chang, um, whoever's, uh, you know, um, choreographing the fight. Uh, we'll say, do this, do this, do this, and especially uh, Master Didi, and, you know, you rehearse it, and everybody rehearses, you rehearse, rehearse that particular movement uh, along with your uh, fight double, you know, and um, 
you come back in about 15 minutes and you're shooting. You know, if they shoot a big wide master shot, you know, when the camera's off, they might use your fight double. As soon as they come in on a medium uh, shot or get tighter, it's all you, all you. And, you know, you have to move your, know your movement. And again, that takes me back to, and I'll reiterate that, it takes you back to the fact that you have a crew that is out there braving the elements and going through exactly what you're going through. So, you know, you can't be, you know, a little girl about it. Even the women on our show won't be a little girl about it. You just toughen up. You do what you got to do because everybody's pulling their weight and you have a bunch of people out there who aren't moving uh, and doing what you're doing to stay warm and they're doing their job. So, you know, you just want to go and do your work. And I, and I appreciate that. And it makes you, you know, uh, want to do great, want to do better, want to do more. Um, and it's just like anything else. When you're in an acting class and you watch somebody go up before you, that's really good. And you go, man, I can't wait to get up there because, um, you know, I want to shine. I want to do my work. It's the same thing with us. You know, you see people doing their stuff and you go, man, I, I want to do, I want to do that too. I'm going to do my work. I'm going to get my movement right. I'm going to do this. And it, you know, it's, it's quite gratifying. It is in a way. I mean, I'm not in the way, but it is gratifying. As you were talking about, you know, kind of the, the, I guess the challenge of moving from a Taekwondo background into implementing Wushu on the show. Yeah. I just, I had this, this thought, this wonder, because your character has one hand. Yeah. And that, that extra hand yep. is a prosthetic and it's used in some pretty creative ways within the yep. show. Has that been a challenge? Yeah, it was a big challenge. Uh, you know, it's quite funny because I, I, I have to say this, this story all the time. Um, I knew that I was going to get, you know, the prosthetic. Yeah, I'm thinking, okay, you know, 300 years in the future, I'm pretty sure they're going to hook me up and give me something that articulates and rotates around. And, you know, I won't have to worry about it. And so I can use my, uh, my right hand, you know, to hold uh, my weapon, my sword. So that whole summer, I am you know, practicing and working with people, you know, doing all this stuff with my, you know, you know, both hands in my right hand, I like my flower, doing flowers and stuff like that. And I'm downstairs in my carport and I get, it's like maybe ugh, 6, 30, 7, 30, something like that, because it was hot that day. So I waited, you know, to, uh, when it cooled off so I can go downstairs and, you know, work on some movement. And I get this text, or not a text, I'm sorry, yeah, no, email. I got an email from uh, Daniel, you know, and I looked at the email and I'm like, uh, and Daniel, hey man, I'll see you in two weeks and hope everything's great. And, you know, we're looking forward to everything and it's going to be fun. Oh yeah, by the way, you are practicing with your left hand only, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hell yeah, Daniel, I'm right here, man. I'm, I'm actually, I'm downstairs doing my left hand right now. And I was sweating bullets because I knew what was going to happen. I knew my balance was going to be off. I, you know, so for two weeks, you know, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working, and trying to, you know, implement everything that I was learning on my right side to my left. And by the time we finished uh, fight camp, I was, when we went into that scene with, uh, when we went into the fight scene, uh, uh, Emily and I, um, it was, uh, I was okay with it, you know, but it, I got better and better, you know, because I was trying to figure out Ruta, myself, Daniel, we were all trying to figure out, you know, how, what to do with that hand, you know, because it's the other hand that you have to worry about, the loose hand. So, you know, I think of it as a shield because I can use that gauntlet to block this and that, and I can shift my weight certain ways to make sure my balance is great, you know, that helps me. And, uh, you know, it works out. And even with Callie, uh, my fight, my fight double, I was teasing him one day. I was like, yeah, welcome to my pain, sucker, you know. So it was, it was both of us. We were kind of off a little bit, but it got better. And plus, that sword is long and awkward. That, that broad sword is a two-handed sword. But, you know, doing it with the left hand. So it just works out. Again, you know, I don't want to look like, I used to tell everybody, you know, in fight camp, I don't want to look like a goof. Don't want to look like a goof, all right? So uh, by the time we got to the moon tower, you know, we all had worked pretty hard to... Uh, uh, get myself uh, ready. And um, we started rehearsing certain movements because Master Didi was going to come in um, late. He was going to be there late, a couple of weeks late. So when we started the show, when we started shooting that particular sequence, we shot a day. 
you know, and it took like nine days, 10 days to do that scene. We shot a, we shot a day, came back, and we, yeah, we shot a day on fight unit. Then we shot a day on drama unit because of the dialogue. We were shooting the dialogue and they had to match everything. And then the third day we were getting ready to do some stuff and Master Didi was there. And so a lot of the movement changed. So everything that we learned a week ago was out the window. It was like, now nah. I'm like, yeah, told you, told you. <laughs> So everybody has to empty their cup and start all over again. Suckers. And it was good. It was cool. You know, because we were all happy to have him back. You know, we were like, when, when's he coming back? When's he coming back? So when he got back, uh, it just it just amped up everything. And again, you know, I was satisfied with what I was doing with my left. And it just got better and better and better. And uh, it was really cool. And especially when we got to the fight with uh, myself and Aramis, you know, because it was just I, using a weapon. So now I can move and do what I want to do. I can, you know, use the hand, use the arm, use the gauntlet for blocking. And it was cool. That, that, I love that. I love that fight sequence. I really love the fight sequence with, um, with Allie. And those guys, they bring it. <laughs> They're no joke. They bring it. Those two will bring it. They will swing at you. Trust me. You should <laughs> I, come over one day it. and let, you should come over and let them swing a sword at you. <laughs> I I would love to just tell me where and when I'll be there. That'd be I, awesome. I hear you. I hear you. And that's another factor. I you know with my training, I've never <clears throat> taken anything uh, any martial arts with with swords or anything like that. Stream of six, yeah. Um, knife fighting, yeah. But with the sword, never. And so this was new to me. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm I think I'm doing okay. I'm all right. I am. I can I can hang there a little bit. I, I think you're doing a little bit more than okay. That oh well, well thank you, sir. You know that that first that first fight scene. You know, really where we're exposed to your character. You know, the top of the tower with you and yeah. Emily. Uh, yeah. That that was the first moment in the entire series that I said yes. They they've yeah they've figured it all out. You know, to me yeah. as as a as a martial arts fan, as a martial artist, all the pieces are there now, and yeah. I just. You know, Crouching Tiger is one of my favorite movies, and there right, was just so right. much of it. I don't know if it was intentional, but it felt like a bit of an homage in that scene. It was. It was. It was. I mean, I think what they're trying to do is throw a little bit of everything, you know, uh, that those guys worked on already before and that we want to see. I want to see it, you know, regardless if, if I'm doing it or not. I mean, I think one of my favorite fight scenes is um, between Caster and Gaius, and the reason why I say that is because um, Dean never taken martial arts in his life, but the key component to that, because I had a conversation with him about it, the key component to that is he's a dancer. So mm. he figured it out just like that. It's just a dance move. I'm dancing with my partner. That's what it is. And that's the same thing uh, Daniel said to me when we shot uh, the Moon Sunny fight. And I, that's one of my favorite fights. Uh, and I had ran into Daniel a couple of months uh, when we had season two premiere at Al's house. And Daniel said that's his favorite fight scene since he's been doing the show. And uh, I think that still stands uh, because, you know, Moon is more of a, because of that broadsword, he's more of a slash, more of a samurai style. And um, it's kind of cool. I, I, I really dig that. And uh, now with the one hand, you know, his style had to change. So that was the whole thing. I was being, I was preparing to do go back and do that when they changed the uh, dichotomy on me, and I had to like you know relearn everything, which is cool, you know. And um, you know, do you enjoy research. that challenge? I do. I, okay. I I have to be challenged. I have to be challenged as an actor. Period. I really do. I really, really do. I really do. I really do. If you're not being challenged, you're you're not growing. Seriously, seriously. And it's not about the failure. It's you know the the success comes with all of the failure. You know, you yeah. I mean, you know, like yeah, you, you know, as a martial artist, you know, you've seen people, you know, not pass their test because they couldn't break something or they had to clean up their forms or their punsies. You know what I mean? And they had to do something after class down the week in order to do this and do that in order to get their higher rank. So that's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Truly. Really. I mean, like yesterday, um, 
had a pretty pretty bu- busy day, and since I'm back now, uh, you know, agents and managers want to get you, you know, just make sure that you're you're working. And uh, a couple of meetings yesterday, and then I got this phone call, well, not a phone call, uh, email. Hey, could you put yourself on tape for this? You know, at the end of the day, I'm tired driving the traffic, L.A. traffic, <clears throat> by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'll go by my friend's house as a director, and we'll knock this out. And I always pride myself by knowing the dialogue. I have to know my dialogue. It's just my process. And it was eight pages of dialogue and there was some serious dialogue in there. And, um, you know, sometimes you just, I don't do it, but I always do it freehand. I never have, the, you know, any size of paper in my hand, but it was a scene where these guys are having this conversation. So, you know, I sat down, knew everything except for I needed to know when I had to jump in and cut this conversation off. So, you know, that's the only time I looked down at the paper and came back, da, da, da. And it was stressful, you know, because they needed it right now, needed it right now. So, okay, cool. I'll take the challenge. I'll take it. You know, I'm, I'm back in LA and I'll take the challenge. And that keeps you sharp. That keeps you honest. Um, that makes you work on your craft. That makes you work on yourself. So, yeah, if I'm not being challenged, then I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I don't like the stress, you know, because as martial artists, we're, we learn how to breathe and take the stress and let everything flow. Um, so that's cool. But at the end of the day, um, as an artist, as a martial artist, I have to be challenged. You know, I really do. You know, if there's a big crazy book or something that I'm probably not going to comprehend, bump it. I'm going to read it. So I don't know anything about molecular science or you know stardust, but I'm going to I'm going to read this book. Bump it. I might learn something. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite questions I ask our guests is around the challenges that we all go through in life. Ah. Martial artists have a a different skill set, a different toolbox to pull from when we deal with obstacles in life. Could you tell us about a time in your life when, you know, stuff went, went off the rails and how you're able to pull it back with stuff you learned in martial arts? I read a book called the Tower of martial arts a couple of years ago. I gave that book to a a friend of mine. um, Who's in the, uh, she's in the uh, finance business business. And uh, the author of the book, it, it escapes him right now was talking about, I mean, there's always challenges. Uh, there are things that you have to, uh, uh, you know, deal with. And uh, he was talking about he was in Switzerland or, 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 or Reykjavik, Iceland or something like that. And he had a health condition that really uh, scared him. He almost died. And what he did was he used his breathing technique to calm his body down and to slow his heart rate down. And his wife was able to get into the hospital uh, and save his life. So um, it's those things, you know, like I injured myself a couple of months ago, pretty bad. And, and I was pretty in pain, I overtrained too much and, and just and pulled um, uh, my oblique muscle uh, from the, the lower, my lower back around. And I was in Rome. It was like, um, it was, I had a couple of days off. So I went to Rome and I just woke up in excruciating pain. I'm like, oh, dude. Don't tell me I'm going to have to go to the hospital in Rome, dude. Stop. Are you kidding me? Really? You know, actor Sherman Augustus just rushed to the hospital in Rome, you know, (laughs) (laughs) on break from into the Badlands. And, you know, oh, he's hospitalized. Oh, and I can hear it now. My mom, what the hell were you thinking working out that hard before you got on the plane? Scooby-Doo and all that stuff. I, I, I knew I was just going to hear it. I'm thinking that. And I just thought about that book. And I just controlled my breathing. And uh, the pain subsided. I didn't take any um, any medicine or anything, any, any pain pills enough because I didn't want to do it. And I woke up the next morning. Uh, it was like maybe two hours of just like, I can't believe this. Oh, I'm in pain. Ah! Right. And I just said, work on your breathing too. And just, you know, picture uh, as you exhale, just picture your breath that's leaving as really icy and cold and just work on that. And it worked. It worked. It worked. I got up the next morning. And uh, actually, I went downstairs in the gym and work, worked out <laughs> and then went sightseeing and ate some great food. And I, I use that all the time. Anytime I really get upset um, or challenges come al- along, I remember that book. I remember about breathing. And, you know, there's all sorts of uh, quotes that uh, Bruce Lee, um, that's out there that you can find it, that 
he, you know, said and recommend. And I, uh, th- that's what I worked on, you know? And so I use that all the time, and especially I have this, this mantra here that I'm not going to let Hollywood give me a heart attack. Right. You know, just the hustle and bustle and the whole thing. And you just, you know, revert back to your training, you know, what you learn, you know, you put on some nice music, you sit on the floor, you meditate and you, uh, put it another place and then you continue with your day. And martial arts did that for me. It really centered me, uh, especially being an ex athlete, you know, you're always, you know, you know, I was a defensive back. So it was all about pounding ground and, you know, hitting people at 20 miles an hour plus, you know, and, you know, knocking the soup out of somebody and knocking the soup out of yourself. And, um, you know, that used to, I mean, it's not relaxing, but, you know, at least you're doing something, you're thinking, uh, you're engaged. And um, that's what martial arts does to me. It keeps me engaged. It keeps me uh, balanced. And, you know, especially when you're doing things like working on your balance and your breathing. I, I tell you, um, I don't know if you spoke with anybody else from the show, but uh, there's this gentleman that Daniel Wu brought on named uh, Matt Lucas, who uh, basically knows every form of martial arts there is. And uh, his dad used to teach Navy SEALs, and he does too. He teaches Navy SEALs. He just sometimes he teaches these classes just to kill. And there's not a way that Matt does not know how to really jack you up. And but he is such a gentleman, such a sweet soul. And what I'm talking about is everything that I said. That's him. And he's a great musician, great guitarist, vocalist. Um, and the sweetest guy in the world. And, you know, every time we're around him, you feel a calm and an ease. And I would ask him all the time, how do you do it? And he just, well, for one thing, man, I'm in the, I'm in the business of service. You know, I like to teach what I know. And he does, he's, he's got a very popular studio in the Bay area. He actually got Daniel, um, ready for the first season because Daniel did not want to play Sonny. Daniel was, they saw over 200 actors uh, because he felt his body was so beat up. But Matt, uh, Matt knows everything. Matt, Matt's, Matt, Matt is crazy. Matt worked on him, worked on his body and got Daniel in great shape. And a lot of his injuries uh, were corrected. And there we are. We have, you know, um, Daniel Wu as, as Sonny. And uh, because, like I said, they saw over 200 actors. So again, it's, it's applying our science of martial arts to our daily life. And there's not a day that goes by that, you know, I'm doing something that I have to apply um, technique, uh, you know, mental, um, you know, physically. Yes, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to do all those things I do every day. But uh, the mental um, aspect of this, this business, you have to add that other business and it helps it so much. It just makes everything so much better for you. And if it wasn't for martial arts, you know, I don't know. We probably wouldn't be having this conversation. You know, I'd probably be like just running down the street right now going, Hey, I'm a butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys. Hey guys, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. What's a butterfly? Seriously. You know, uh, because this business will it. make you do that. This yeah. business will make you go nuts. Seriously. You know, well, I, I mean, so, not to put too fine a point on it, but, you know, unfortunately, the the percentage of people who take their life out of Hollywood is is quite a bit above yeah, the overall it average. It is. It is. And I, I encourage all my friends all the time or any actor find themselves a good martial arts class. You know, and don't go in. It's like, you know, you're going to come out and you're going to start just whooping everybody's butt. Go in there. You'll learn something about yourself. You know, when you know how to hold your balance for a side kick, a roundhouse, even a front kick, you know, a simple front kick, you know, even on a simple front kick, you're going to have to rotate that supporting foot, you know, to do this, to do that. And, um, you know, once they start learning that, they come back, yo, you're right, you're right, you know, and it changes your body. Um, and it's just a, a great form of cross training. It is. It's a great form of cross training. And uh, it's just about mind, body, and spirit, and you focus yourself, and it's all about the focus. And um, just one working on it themselves and being true to themselves. And that's why I love martial arts, because in, in this business, you have to be true to yourself, and you have to stick to your guns. You have to. And um, 
Yeah, because I can say that there's not been a project. Uh, I've been fortunate, thank God, in my career to do really good stuff and to work with really good people because I do have my box of deplorables and uh, there's certain things that I won't do. And uh, what helps me with those decisions is the simple fact of martial arts. And um, I love it. You know, it's, it's, been a, it's been a game changer for me and uh, a lifesaver, you know, from going off the deep end and mad because I didn't get this job or, um, you know, upset because that person got the job or whatever the case may be. Or, uh, for instance, I was watching something yesterday, a popular film, and uh, there's a rapper uh, in it. And nice guy. I'm not going to name any names. Nice guy. But when it came to his fight scenes, I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, I know why he got the gig. It's because, you know, they thought he was going to put butts in movie theater seats. I get it. It's the business. But it wasn't about me or anything else or anything like that. It's just the fact when you watch something, you know. I mean, how did you feel about, how do you feel about, uh, how did you feel about the first season of uh, Iron Fist? I, I I was a bit of a contrarian on that. Everybody coming out and trashing it, and and, uh, and my the, no, the fight scenes weren't great. I, I think everybody okay. agreed. That's with all. That. That's all. That's all. Okay. I mean, that's it. That's it. That's it. You know, I I'm rooting. I was rooting for the show, but I saw mm-hmm. what I saw, and then you know I heard that the, you know the actor was you know who's like, hey, look, you know, I'm here. I'm doing this. I don't really need to train. And I'm like, okay, but that's his prerogative. That is his priority, you know, prerogative. If he doesn't want to apply it, you know, you don't have to, you're not going to get a black belt, you know, before you start shooting. But, you know, um, it might have been good. It might have been good to go there as an actor. It might have been good to go there. As, I mean, look at Keanu Reeves. Boom. That's all I have to say. Trains, 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 trains. Why? Because I'm going to apply this to my character. Not only that, you know what? It's going to help me focus. That's what it's about. That is no what it's about. Yeah, there's no downside to it. No, you're you asked the question. Right. Um, actually, both Daniel and Emily came on the show just ahead of season two. We were uh-huh. lucky enough to have them on. And Daniel told that story that you mentioned about him not wanting to be the star and, and very reluctantly stepping into that role. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was pretty interesting to hear that mm-hmm. from him, yeah. you know, because he was aware of not just the role that he wanted to have on the show, but his age, his, his body and saying, you know, guys, what is, what does the show look like 10 yeah. years from now? What do I yeah. look like physically 10 years from now? Well, that, well, that's okay. I mean, look, I'm 138 years old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I graduated from college. It was me, Moses and, uh, no, no, Moses graduated the year before. It was me and Jesus that graduated together. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yeah, way back in the day. Yeah, I remember when he was building the ark. He was like, yo, man, help me. I'm like, ah, gotta go to football practice. <laughs> <laughs> How, now, you, you talked about that, that incident in Rome where, you know, things weren't working so hot. How do you keep yeah. yourself in shape for all those, you know, just from, from what I understand, um, from what we heard from, from Daniel on episode 170, uh-huh. just having having the two teams having the fight team and the and and the drama team shooting right. Right. you know it, it's it's a it's a lot it's a lot of physical activity all at once was my understanding yeah how yeah. do you how do you recover how do you know that you're going to be able to get up the next day and hit it hard again um like Keanu Reeves said when he was doing the first matrix ice is your friend uh so is uh, a lot of uh dp rubs and <laughs> um stretching uh, I think, you know, one of the, one of the main things is, is diet. You know, it's not that I don't, I watch, I just watch what I eat, but I eat, you know, it's not like, you know, I'm not going to, I can't have that because, you know, I got to watch my figure. It's not that it's just, you know, certain foods of, you know, you know how it is. Certain foods are, are bad for your joint. Um, and of course, being an ex football player, I've broke almost every toe and every finger. Uh, uh, my right wrist was, was severely broken in, in, in college. Um, which is a trip because every now and then I'll get a little tingle in there, especially if I'm in a, in a fight scene or something. Uh, of course, the knees, uh, right knee in particular, right knee in particular, I had two uh, 
Arthur was on it, and they left me just a little, just a little carless, just enough to just like, you know, maybe uh, put my shoe on. But, um, you know, and so with those things, you know, you just find what works. And, you know, I, I always like to push myself. I do a lot of walking. I do a lot, a lot of walking, uh, a lot of hiking um, and jump rope. And I just watch what I eat, you know, and um, I just, uh, yeah, I just watch what I eat. And, you know, I, I, I kind of let, I think Daniel did the same thing this season. I kind of let the weights go. Uh, the only thing I do for weights is very light stuff. And I love doing uh, pull-ups, push-ups, and dips. And it's about your body, uh, being able to move your body. You know this as a martial artist, um, being able to pull your own body weight. And uh, because that's what we're doing uh, on the show, you know, we have to pull our own body weight. We have to do these things. And um, it helps, especially when you're doing bio work, you know what I mean, um, which is really cool. And um, I think just watching certain foods that I eat that, again, uh, affect your joints. Because a lot of things can slow your joints up and all that kind of stuff. Just make you feel kind of crappy. So um, that's one good key component that I do. What are your goals? You talked about looking at, at directing. At, I think I heard you say producing as well. But yeah. If we, if we look at it from the lens of martial arts, I'm not saying just your martial arts goals, but, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do, does, does your life as a martial artist look like as you look out into the future? I'm a... Uh... War history buff. There's a couple of things. Uh, there's, a, there's a story about the 66th Tank Regiment that uh, was um, comprised of uh, uh, African-American gentlemen uh, who were doctors, and just like the Tuskegee Airmen. And in World War II, they were under Patton's command. And so uh, they were instrumental in getting the 104th Airborne out of the, uh, the soup that they were in in the, uh, in, uh, the Ardennes far as uh, in the Battle of the Bulge, and um, they did not lose a tank. And it takes a certain mindset, you know, because of the whole racial thing that was going on and everything and, and, you know, stuff that Patton was saying at the time. And uh, they did not lose a tank. And it's the same thing with martial arts. I mean, you have to put yourself in a mindset that you're going to learn this movement. You're going to learn how to do a cut, you know, you, you know, all certain things. Um, you know, you're going to get that spinning wheel kick a certain way. You're going to be, you know, that whole thing. And so that's one of my goals. I would like to see that story told. And, um, you know, I apply all these things. Everything that I want to do equals martial arts for me. And uh, that's a goal. And so, you know, you have to go, you have to get that warrior spirit again and tell yourself you're not going to take no for an answer. Uh, you're going to approach everything um, very calm and very centered. You're going to be able to pitch this idea to a room full of people, very calm and very centered. And they're going to see every, you know, people, you know, you read things about people seeing the light within you. Well, um, you know, certain, you know, people can look at you and go, he's an athlete, he's a football player, he's this, he's that, regardless, you know, how you look or whatever. Um, and I try to get, I try to walk in every room and let everyone know that uh, it, it is authentic. Uh, you know, the skills that I have is authentic and it's not like I can come in here and just start, you know, you know, side kicking holes in your wall, you know, you don't see my, my, uh, my point of view. It's not that, but you know, it just keeps you centered. It helps you, um, it helps me. Uh, there's again, in everything I do, there's not a day that goes by that, you know, I don't remember something in my training. And that, that, that works for everything. And so I'm, I, I equate that to the certain things that I want to do. <clears throat> you know, it's always about that challenge. Um, growing up, you know, there's two things. I, was like, I knew I was going to be a football player. I didn't know how far I was going to go. I knew I was always going to be an actor. I knew these things. So I had to apply those things. And so I knew I was going to get a black belt in a form of martial arts. So it takes a certain mindset, and I was not going to take no for an answer. And that's what martial arts does, too. It just it, it, when, when I lock down on something, I'm like that little chariot. I'm not going to let go until I achieve my goal. So there's a bunch of goals I want to do. There's, there's certain projects I want to see brought 
uh, to fruition. You know, I like to see other people's stories. It doesn't just matter about, it's not about African-American. I, you know, it's just something about a Martian. You know, look, hey, you know, I want to see a name. This is a good story. So, you know, again, all that, go back to my training. Go back to my training. Um, there's not a day that goes by that, I, that my training, um, I'm not thinking about my training. And I'm not applying that into something all the time. It's just that mindset. I'm pretty sure you do the same thing. Pretty sure. I, do. I think pretty we sure. all do, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. 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 I think martial arts kind of weaves its way into your DNA in a sense. And so it it's does. hard to escape it. It does. I mean, when I first started, Master Jen said, uh, asking me, I was like, hey, so do you think about martial arts every day? He goes, every day. Every day. You always remember your training. Um, I mean, you know, you slip and fall, you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to use your fall technique. I've done it. I, I, I remember pulling into, uh, into the dojang. It was in the parking lot. And I walked in and, and Master Park was on the ladder and the ladder kind of did something. It slipped out from under and he fell and he fell perfectly. Bah! Popped right back up. I'm like, oh, he goes, see, I'm telling you, Sherman, always remember your training. Boom. There it is. <laughs> I love it. This yeah. has been a lot of fun today. We always ask our guests to send us out with some parting words of wisdom. So what would you say to everybody listening? Ah, oh, man. Be true to yourself. And, um, you know, let no one define who you are. And whatever you want to, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. You know, that little thing right there it means a lot. And um, it's just vitally important to believe and trust in yourself and no matter what you want to do and no matter what age you are, no matter what condition that you're in, you can achieve anything you want to do and don't take no for an answer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Trust in yourself and find that, that certain spirit within you to, to drive you. And, um, you know, it's okay if it takes X amount of months or X amount of years. Just set your goal and achieve it and let no one or nothing um, hinder you from being the person that you, you see in your head. I mean, you know, just embed it into the zeitgeist of your mind. This is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it, period. And that's it. That's it. Whenever I have the opportunity to talk to actors or musicians, people who are paid for a role to present themselves in a certain way, I always wonder how much of what I'm getting from them is authentic? Well, I can tell you from the brief time that I spent talking to Mr. Augustus on the show, but more so the time after we closed the episode, what you heard is who he is. This is every bit as authentic as I could imagine having a conversation with anyone, be they someone who is on television or not. And I want to thank and I want to thank him for that openness. And thanks for coming on the show, Mr. Augustus. I had a, a ton of fun. You're welcome back anytime. Of course, you can find the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got some photos and some other great stuff over there, links to other episodes. You can find the conversations I had with Coach Daniel Wu and Miss Emily Beecham from their episodes prior to season two of Into the Badlands. If you enjoyed this episode, hopefully you'll not only check out other episodes, but share it with your friends. Help us grow, help us gain more reach, and we can get more people onto the show. You can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. You can find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick. All of our products, all of our other projects are available at whistlekick.com. And that's all I've got for today. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.